Hello everyone, happy to be here once again during one of our live webinars. This time for our tips and tricks series where we share little insights on automating your NetOps with NetBrain. I'm Claudio Pelay, your host and senior content manager. Today acts as a sort of companion piece to our pain point series webinar from two weeks ago. And as such, we'll dive into the world's security once again. This time it's all about compliance with industry standards and regulations. Why security compliance? Because it keeps us up at night, sometimes literally, when having to contain a security breach that's costing the organization millions. But the positives of security compliance can't be ignored either. First and foremost, security compliance keeps company data secure and away from the wrong hands. It also avoids penalties and fines from regulators and shields us from legal liabilities. It maintains our customers' trust in our ability to protect their interests and keep services running. And lastly, compliance with security standards and certifications puts us in a competitive position for new business. This goes back to customer trust, not just with existing clients, but potentially new ones as well who might not consider non-compliant vendors. How is security compliance achieved today? The hard way, manual assessment of security procedures and implementations, device by device, line by line. So how can we do it with NetBrain? We do it by digitizing those security policies into our network intents, then replicating those intents across every device in the network, and then finally, letting NetBrain continuously monitor your network for compliance and alerting you to any violation of your security policy. In our last webinar about network security automation, best practices for hybrid networks, our expert George showed us just that, how to use intents to continuously audit your network for compliance with security best practices, like limiting remote access to our network equipment to just secure protocols like SSH. George also showed us the intent logic, and how to replicate one intent template across various devices on your network, easily scaling what once seemed like a daunting task into full automation in seconds. Now, during that webinar, we received some really great questions, including one about whether NetBrain can check for missing configuration commands on our network devices. Instead of comparing command syntax like transport input SSH versus transport input all, we instead check to see if commands like VRF internet are configured at all to make sure internet traffic is always segmented from more sensitive traffic. I thought that would make a fantastic tips and tricks video. And so here we are. Today, we're gonna to see how we can ensure implementation of common security standards and regulations using intents, going deep in the weeds and actually building those intents from scratch. You'll learn how to audit the network for any missing configurations using no code automation to digitize SME knowledge and leverage it for preventive operations. So let's go to today's scenario, where our security architect is prepping our organization for CMMC. CMMC stands for Cybersecurity Maturity Model Certification, and it helps the U.S. Department of Defense gauge how mature contractors' data security measures are. This is important as it determines who is eligible for crucial contracts. Again, IT security opens up new income streams and maintains the existing ones. After looking at our current security protocols, our architect noticed that our organization doesn't audit for some commonly identified protocols that should never be enabled. Some of them are so old that they're no longer supported by newer hardware. Still, we must not take it for granted and we must make sure they are disabled on all our network equipment. Our security architect identified six protocols that are currently unaccounted for in our audits. So he's had our network architects determine how those security measures would be implemented in configuration. Now it's up to our network operations team to build the automation that will assess the network for any of these security vulnerabilities. Let's take a look at a particularly crucial part of our network, our core backbone. We're gonna use this map to build and test our intent automation, but ultimately this new audit should run across our entire network. All right, so let's get building. With this map open, let's go to the intent manager and click on new intent to capture the design. Let's give it an appropriate name and then choose an appropriate seed device to build the intent off of. Right now, we're not building one standalone intent. We're building a template that can be replicated to check multiple devices on our network. So we only need to pick one device for now. If you see here, it's already populated with devices from the map, but we could have chosen any device from our network. Because this is a template, we'll want to choose a device that's representative of all the devices we want to run the intent on. And now, here is the magic of no-code intent automation. We're gonna add a diagnosis. If you already know CLI, you know how to automate with NetBrain. We can pick commands to execute in our intent and then parse through the output to analyze. Here we're going to analyze the configuration and we'll be looking for missing commands. Because of that, we'll want show run all because in the case of Cisco, some default commands are hidden from the regular show run. We actually execute this command live on the device and the output will be our baseline. Once we have a baseline, we can highlight portions of it and use them as variables. Again, 
Because we are checking for missing commands, we'll want to use the entire config file as a variable. So we'll choose multi-line text as the variable type. We'll give this variable a name, something memorable. Then we get to highlighting the part of the baseline we want to parse through, which in this case is all of it. We'll click apply and then get to defining the diagnosis. We have multiple diagnoses to add to check for those six configuration commands, but we're going to add just the first one for now to test our logic. We click on add diagnosis and give it the name of the first command to check for. So we're doing HTTP server. The diagnosis is simple if then logic. If the config file has the command, then the intent is fulfilled and we can call it a success. Knowing that, we'll choose the config variable we created to run the diagnosis logic against. We'll be looking for the command our architects identified to disable HTTP. We add the notes here and status code. Now we want to identify those devices without the command. So we do an else and give it the appropriate note and status code. Here's where we want to make sure that we're alerted should the intent find a device with HTTP enabled. We click apply. We close out this window, and now we're going to templatize this for other devices in our network that should have the exact same commands. We save our intent. We're going to place it in the auto intent folder because ultimately that's what it will be used for. Now from the template menu, we choose the qualification. This is the replication. We determine what devices the template applies to. There are many attributes we can pick from to apply this intent. But because these are Cisco IOS commands, we know that we can run this intent on any Cisco IOS device. So here we're going to choose Cisco IOS switches and Cisco routers. We save our new template, and then it's ready to be installed into our intent library. From here, we'll be able to convert this template into both an auto intent and later on as preventive automation. Once again, we save under our auto intents category and make sure to select template as the intent mode instead of standalone. Once installed, we can configure it as an auto intent with a quick check mark, and now it's ready to be decoded. Decoding will determine just how many devices we can run this intent on based on the qualifications we set earlier, i.e. Cisco IOS devices. Okay, our auto intent is ready. And what used to be a single intent now becomes 20, which is the total number of iOS devices we have on this network. Remember, we started from a map of only six devices and only chose one as a seed. And yet, we are now able to transpose this one intent automation across our entire Cisco ecosystem. Let's go back to the map and test this intent out. Clicking the intent tab from the map, we can search for the auto intent we just created. It displays all the eligible devices from this map it could run against and essentially creates a new map intent that diagnoses every device on this map from just the one template. No scripts, no for loops, and no debugging. This is 100% no code. Now let's run it to see if it successfully identifies compliant and non-compliant devices. Here are the results, and it looks like we have two compliant and four non-compliant. We can see which from the output here, but we can also visualize the results in the map we can see exactly which four devices are currently vulnerable. Now we know the logic works, so let's finish our intent with the rest of the diagnoses. We search for our template again, open, click edit, edit the diagnosis, and we continue adding more diagnoses to the same intent. We'll add the boot P server check next. This will follow the same logic that's been proven to work with HTTP server. Now we'll skip to RSH. RSH and RCP will be a bit tricky because those protocols have been deprecated on newer versions of iOS, which means commands to either enable them or disable them are not accepted. But our security architect would really prefer we confirm it's not enabled on any device. So we're going to try a slightly different logic. It starts with the same if then, where we check the configuration for the disable command and provide the appropriate diagnosis note. Here's where we diverge and add a little bit of extra logic. Instead of an else, we add an else if to check for the enable command. If RSH is allowed, we put the appropriate alerts as expected. 
Only after checking for both commands do we add an else. If the device has neither a disable nor enable command, then we know that it does not support the protocol and therefore it is compliant. The other three diagnoses have already been added to an already completed intent, which we will use to complete our audit. We save our updated template and then return to the map to recreate the map intent and execute it once again. Ooh. Now we see every router on our backbone is non-compliant with our security policy. Zoom in for a closer look at the specific diagnoses that failed and succeeded. We can see bootp and HTTP are the main culprits here. Our security architect was right to be concerned. But one part of the network isn't enough and neither is one validation. To ensure we're always compliant, even as the network changes, we need to continuously assess the entire network. And that's as simple as going to the intent library and configuring an intent timer to run periodically. Every week, every day, you decide. Results can be exported to a CSV file and alerts can be sent via email or to your ITSM of choice. This is the end of our tips and tricks demo and we hope you found it illuminating. If you have any questions, please be sure to type them on the chat window and our experts will try to answer them during the Q&A. But before we get to the Q&A, we just wanted to thank you once again for joining us and we wanted to share this scannable QR code that will direct you to our website where you can schedule your own demo or check out our new guided tours at your own pace. And with that, let's get to the Q&A. For those of you who just joined a little later, um, you can input your questions in the chat window. So just giving a little moment here for any questions to come in. So here's a question um, for you, George. Um, all of these in, all of these diagnoses were for one line commands, right? But what if we're trying to check for BGP security, where we're trying to um, block uh, or we're trying to block bogans, and we want to see like the whole list of of bogan IPs? Can you do? one diagnosis with multiple lines of commands or does each single um, IP in an ACL have to be a separate diagnosis? So that's a good question, Claudio. With NetBrain, um, you could do it either way. So if you're looking at a set of access control lists, you could you could look at the entire access control list configlet and and then use logic around all of the ACLs rather than looking at each one on its own. Um, and further to that, you're talking about BGP, you could also even use things like the BGP neighbor table, like a show IP BGP neighbor, um, and parse the output of that command issued to the device to look for things like if neighbor states are idle or anything else. OK. Um... Just waiting for any more questions. Okay, so here's a great question. Um, we're getting a question about um, a customer with uh, NetBrain, but it doesn't have an intent manager. Uh, which version supports that? They currently have 8.02. Yeah, so. Network intent was introduced in NetBrain version 10. Um, the intent manager itself is a feature that was added when we released version 11. So you would need to upgrade to at least version 10 to use network intents. Um, and to do that, you can engage your um, account manager and they can help you get all the information you need to upgrade. Uh, George, I know you're, you're part of the technical team, but um... From a financial perspective, do you know if they have to pay for that upgrade? Uh, yeah, so upgrades uh, of NetBrain are included in your uh, current subscription, th so there would be no added financial um, cost to an upgrade. Awesome. Um, then we have another question come in. Can we set conditions which determine whether the intent continues running in the periodic run mode? Um, so specifically to that, um, uh, I don't believe you can with NetBrain. It's either going to run periodically or not. But we do have another feature called adaptive monitoring, whereby what you can do is set set a precondition. So 
for example, if we're talking about BGP, you might not want to run any checks unless the BGP neighbor table changes on a device, right? So what you can do is set NetBrain to do a check just for that simple thing, right? Look at the table. Has that table changed? If that table does change, then I want to execute two or three network intents to get a detailed diagnosis of, of what's going on. Did someone make a, a configuration change that caused it to change? Did a neighbor go down? Things like that. But it would run once. So it's like an event-driven trigger. Right. Right. Um, I think that's all the questions we have for today. So I believe that wraps it about up. Um, if you're hoping for more tips and tricks, uh, join us next month. And until then, thank you and goodbye.